Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Welcome to the maintenance and restoration of the Asheville Road Sweeper. Delivery time. Noel couldn't knock the pin out, so he actually had to use the grinder. We need two new front tires. So we've managed to cut this piece. It's coming out. Hey, that's not working. So now we're gonna heat up this side and we begin. This is on a DAF 12 ton chassis and it's got the Johnson sweeping equipment on the back of it. We're gonna get this off. We're gonna have a look at the lorry first because there's a couple of lights on the dashboard, I think brakes, ABS and stuff like that. Then we're gonna look at the back of it of all the Johnson stuff. Noel's gonna do some welding, etc. Then we're gonna send it off to get sprayed because this is the wrong color and we need this black. When beginning this restoration project, we have to look at two separate entities. One, the chassis, which is a DAF, and then two, the sweeper gear, which is Johnson. So we're gonna make our way through the DAF chassis, have a look at everything which needs to be repaired and serviced. Then we're gonna look at the Johnson gear and we'll go through all that as well. The first thing you will see is that the windscreen has a huge crack in it. And one windshield wiper is basically dead and the other one's missing. On the front here, we thought that the foot valve was leaking, but it's not. It's the pipe that's connected onto it. Listen. Now we're at the engine, we're gonna give it a full service. That's oil, fuel, air, and we're gonna change the AdBlue filter. Right in here at the back, we have the water trap filter, what's located right next to the diesel tank. We're gonna change that as well. When we first jumped in the lorry, we thought we had a problem with a gearbox, but thankfully it's not. Now this is a left-hand drive, not because it came from Europe, because they assume when you're cleaning the road, it will be on the near side where you're cleaning just close to the pavement, etc., below the curb. In a normal lorry and all our other lorries, the gear stick is here. However, there's another attachment, what comes over to this side for the gear stick to be on the other side. And the problem, isn't the gear stick, the problem isn't the gearbox. If you have a look, you'll see this movement here. Shouldn't be doing that, so we believe the problem is a bearing. Have a look at this drawing here, and we're gonna circle the part which we think we need. There are a few lights on the dashboard, but we don't know what they are yet. We're gonna do the bits and pieces we've said and give it another run, and we have to do it bit by bit. We're not gonna find everything on our first run through. So Noel's gonna plug the computer in, see what faults exactly come up, and then we'll work out what we need to replace. This lorry arrived with no mud guards whatsoever. However, we have a new one on this side, and the second one is just about to go on the other side. These are essential. You can't go on the road without these. What you can see us doing to fit the mud guard on is putting this piece of timber underneath, lining it up, putting all the brackets in place, and then we drill the holes. We drill the holes and fit it, pull the timber out, and it should be in its perfect position. A little bit later on when we're done, as with all my lorries, I'm gonna put the stainless steel mirror guards on it. It just protects it. If somebody gives it a slap, it basically hits the mirror guard and doesn't break any of these. So there's one engine for the sweeper, powers the DAF, keeps it moving, and then we have this donkey engine here, which powers all the sweeper gear. We're gonna give this engine exactly the same treatment. We're gonna change the filters for the oil, fuel, and air. Having a look at the Johnson unit on top, this area here, there used to be a rubber, and that rubber closed down right here. Now we need to put this back in place, so when this is closed, it'll keep the engine quiet and it'll increase the airflow for the donkey engine. One of us has to stay here and hold the gear stick. We're trying to put it in neutral and we're struggling to put that bearing that I showed you earlier. You can't tell when it's in gear, but we can tell because no one's got their foot on the clutch and we're trying to start it and it won't start. So we're trying to jiggle it around. Just play now, see if it starts. See if it'll start. Boom. Let's see the difference in the noise once this is down. Whoop. Now straight away that's a lot quieter and when we put the new rubber seal on it here, you're here next to nothing. We've got this great remote control to operate everything. You have to keep your finger on the green button then you can press the other bits. So just keep our finger on the green, let's press this and we can open up our back door. If any of you watch Asheville Weekly, you'll see that when this was full of water, water started coming out of the back here. That's because there's a problem with the rubber seal on the back door. So we need to order a new seal for that and when this closes, it should be secured. No, I'm going in. This is the top of the hoovers you can see on either side. So now when this side is working, this side is closed. But we have a problem. When this arrived, we noticed on top of the hoover here, someone put the lid of a can of paint and they put a stone on top of it. It's what it's meant to actually look like. And we've worked out that this one is not opening and closing. So we need to see what's going on with that. This one is working perfectly fine. No, open and close, please. 
Very nice, that one's working well. This one definitely isn't working properly. This is what it looks like from the outside when it's opening and closing. Press it, Noel. So this ram on the outside is working well. This is the hoover that sucks up to what you can see going inside. You can see there's a bit of damage on the body here. Rather than trying to weld this, it's probably easier just to cut this entire section here and put a brand new section on. Uh, we're gonna do all the welding and body work before it goes to get sprayed. We're gonna get the cab and the chassis all working well. Then we're gonna go in depth into the back and the Johnson gear and see what we need to do there. Gear stick is working well. We have first, second, third, fourth, flick a switch, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect, we had a bit of trouble doing it. Noel couldn't knock the pin out, so he actually had to use the grinder and cut it and then put the new one on. As we go through it, we find more bits and pieces. Uh, we took off the headlights around because this headlight looked like it was damaged. What had happened is the dust cap on the back, what's there when you're changing the bulb, the dust cap was missing, so a lot of moisture got in here. So we managed to take it off, dry it out, and now it's back to its former self. On the front, we changed these anti-roll bar bushes. Now, I'm not getting on the skateboard and going underneath there because I'm too big. The, uh, the bottom of the lorry will be rubbing in my face. But believe me, these are the old ones and now there are new ones fitted. Front brake pads were a bit low, so we changed those. And having a look at the tires, we need two new front tires. Unfortunately, I don't have any other vehicle with this size tire, so we've had to order new ones here. We also need two new back tires. When I was in the back, I showed you that flap that's meant to go up and down. Now, this is the ram that controls it. So we've disconnected it and there's a pipe that goes from here all the way to there and the flap actually sits down there. Now, we've taken the broken one out and we're trying to pull this out, but we can't because it is seized solid. Here's the one that broke. You can see it's completely rotten here. I suppose what's happened is the bar is just seized and then this is just snapped. We have to get a new starter motor as well. It does turn on, but it doesn't work properly. So it's best to just put the new starter on and forget all that messing around. So we have managed to bring it out a bit and it is turning now, but we're gonna have to beat the thing out the whole way. <sighs> the adjustment tool, the sledgehammer. So <laughs> we're beating it from the inside and it's coming out. We finally got the bar out. You can see how corroded it is at the end. This is where it snapped with the flap, which is over there. So now it all makes sense. So we had to put another rod in to beat this one out. And now we've got that out, we're using the rod to clean out where the pipe was to try and get any rust or debris out of there. We put an old rag here, and now we'll push this rag down with this. That should give it a clean, whoa. All right, so that should be nice and clean now. Uh, no plug the computer in and the ABS light on the dash was this. So we've ordered a new one and we've put it on and the dashboard is now clear. Nice. We've had to take this hose off. This hose was connected on the side here and it went underneath the lorry and connected to the high pressure wash. So there's a low pressure at the front and there's a high pressure at the back. And this hose, if you can see, it snapped here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the exact same hose again and put this back on. I've never had a sweeper before, so I've asked them to send me drawings. And of the drawings they've sent, I've got to highlight the part numbers I want and then send an email. I've managed to sort out the back door. I'd like extension pipes for it. So the extension pipes I'd like to order, they're storage compartments on either side of the body. So basically the long hose on the top, which can suck up water, I'd like to be able to uh, suck water, which is around maybe blocking a drain or something like that. Also, I've managed to order the long rod. Here's the rod and here's the flap. I've ordered those. Finally, the rubber seal for the engine compartment. I've also ordered that. So we've managed to cut this piece out of the body of the Johnson sweeper. Now, having a look at it, 
the edge here would suggest that they put the body down and there was something in the way and that's how it got damaged. I don't think they gave it a slap. I think it came down on something. So this has been completely taken out. Now Noel has been working on this area. He's cut it out and he's created a surface here with the grinder where he can do a flush weld. And this is the 1.6 mil uh, piece of metal which I bought. So Noel's gonna measure this to size, he's gonna cut it, and then he's gonna do a nice weld and get this fitted on there. We are about 30% done in this area. The new piece is in place and we have done a tack weld just to hold it. Now we're gonna start with the main weld. When the main weld is done, we're gonna scurf it using this. That's to take off the weld and make it look nice. And we begin. The new plate is firmly welded on. Now, although it looks a bit rough, but once it gets into the spray booth and they do the work they've got to do as well, it's gonna look lovely. Glad this is on. It's much better than the state of the other one. I showed you the lights around and the lights around was damaged. It came off and it's fallen apart. Uh, we managed to get hold of a second hand lights around. We've got it here and we've bolted the underrun to it. So now it's looking good and we're gonna get this back on. We're gonna put the starter motor on, but to get to the starter motor, we have to take a load of pipes up underneath. I can see a couple of feeds and stuff, so this is gonna take a few hours of stripping. We'll put the new one in, and then we have to put everything back. The hose for the sweeper, we're gonna make that now. What we're trying to do is we're trying to feed the new pipe through the chassis and down to the front. So the whole thing is running on the inside of the chassis here, but then there's so many pipes and stuff, it's got to come round here and pokes out there. Delivery time. The Johnson parts have arrived. On closer examination, we decided that we need to change the front tires also. So we had one good one on each side. So we've taken those two and put them together on the other side, and we're going to put two new tires here taking a very close look at the locking mechanism and we saw a few problems. Basically where it locks here is meant to be on the front here and this is meant to be somewhere here but at the moment when it locks it's here. This is because it's not staying in place because of the bushes and pins throughout they're all old it's just wear and tear. Now I can see that the previous owner tried to get around this and they welded an additional piece on the end here in order to try to hold this but it hasn't worked. We want this back door to be closed properly. Also on the sides here, you can see these adjuster bolts and these are completely rotten as well. We've taken it off, we've heated it up a bit to see, so now we can see all the play in it, we can see all the bushes, all the pins, we can see all the issues and now we have a drawing of this locking mechanism and we're going to pick the parts which we need and we're going to replace this area so the back door locks properly. This adjuster bolt on this side, we heated it up so we could see what it was doing and see if we can move it round. And this one hasn't been touched, so you can see the difference in the two. So now we're gonna heat up this side and see if we can get any movement in this one. It's nice and hot, there we go. Now we can untighten it. Woo! Now we're gonna put a socket on it. This is pretty normal for a sweeper of this age. And the adjuster bolts are out. Just put this in a vise so we can work on it properly. When we put it up like this, when we move this round, we can see the play on this side. Like there's savage play in this, it's all over the place. We've put on all the new pivot bolts and arms, so look how this moves now. Look how that works. Here, you see? All the play is completely gone out of it. That works a lot better. 
Now we're gonna put the new RAM on. Now I tried on my list to buy separate parts to not fix all of it, but they wouldn't sell it to me in separate parts. They said it was a kit. So I had to buy the entire kit and the RAM came. So the RAM's here, so we might as well put it on. Slight difference there. And for me, this looks like the RAM that was on there originally when it was first made. So it served its purpose, but the new one's a lot fresher. The pin is in and now the clip is on. Put the RAM in place. The bolt goes through it, washer, and now the nut. Simple as that. Let's try to get it in place. We put it at this sort of height so we can attach the hydraulic pipes onto the ram. <laughs> and I do believe one of the hydraulic pipes has just gone. <laughs> We've ordered new ones. They are definitely a lot fresher. What we need to do is bolt this back onto the body connect what we can then we need to raise this body in the air and then we can change the hydraulic hose so we've got four bolts in it but they're not very tight so now we're going to use the hand tool tighten it up and then we're going to use the adjuster bolt to get it in the right place here you'll see this pipe is completely gone but it's nothing we did this pipe is just old and rusty you can see that this one was changed this one is definitely newer than this one but in order to change this we have to jack up the body so we're going to jack the body up and get someone in to make us a new pipe and we'll put it on and today we're going to do the service of the donkey engine uh, eventually we'll have that back door fully done uh, we have all the rubbers here to do the rubbers at this point by the end of today everything on the back of the lorry should be done. We've already finished all the work on the chassis and the cab. We've got our new tires, so we will be ready to take this to get sprayed. Hey, that's not working. That wasn't working before, we got this working now. We haven't done any adjustment whatsoever, but already we got a better seal on the door. Much better. We're actually having a spot of luck here because if you remember before, I told you we ordered the new rubber for the back door because the water was spurting out. Now that we can lock the door properly, it's completely flush, so we won't have that leak and we didn't have to pay for the new rubber. Nice. If you have a look on the back now, you can see the flat opening and closing as it should. And again! Perfect. Truth be told, we used the new rod but we used the old flap because there's actually nothing wrong with the flap. It was just where the flap was connected to the rod. So we've used the old one and we're gonna keep the new one in stock. You never know, we don't waste anything here. Now my flap's working internally. Here I've removed the top of the paint can and the stone, no longer needed. We're gonna tighten this up a bit more and then we're gonna hand tighten it at the end and the adjuster bolts on the side here, we're gonna use them. And when we use the adjuster bolt, it's gonna bring this in a bit and this works out how tightly closed this is going to be but we don't want it to be too tight so we're just going to bring it just close to flush and that should be perfect nice and tight this awkward location here this is where you bleed all the oil out of the engine and this takes about three hours that oil is just rancid this has been a long time since the oil has been changed it's probably lost all its lubrication and everything and look at the color of it as well Blech we definitely needed an oil change of this donkey engine. The rubber seal is now in place. The process is to clean the existing area, put glue on that area, then put glue on the rubber, and two of us stand here, and then we manage to just fit it in. So you start in the corners. So fit these two sides in the very far corner, then you stick it here, then all around there. Okay, let's see when this drops down, the sound level decreases. Barely hear the donkey engine. Spot on.
All the mechanical work is done on the chassis and on the Johnson unit, so we are ready to spray. And we're not in the yard. We're up at John Radford's, and we're gonna sandblast this. After a sandblasted, then we're gonna spray it all in black. And I'm trying to remember what the row color is. Is STS. Here it is. Woohoo! Look at that! Look at that. That is fresh to death. Oh my goodness, it looks brand new. Liquor paint, stickers, artwork. Now it has been fully ash filled. I'm loving it. It looks fresh. I can't wait. Oh, that's a nice fresh paint job. Uh, you can see all the work that Noel did on the side of it looking great there. The artwork is done, looking perfect. Even the rims. Gotta have the black on black rims, man. Got it on my cars and on the lorries. Looks so fresh now and then this should protect it for a good few years to come. Ah, oh, they've even gone to the extent of spraying here. Wow, the cab looks nice, the cab's all shiny. I used to previously always spray the steps yellow. I don't do it anymore because when you're getting in and out, in and out all the time, your feet will end up taking it off here. Looking good, isn't it? How much better does it look in black? It will look like this for precisely 24 hours. And then it'll look like everything else in the yard. This is ready to start cleaning. Perfect, let's take it for a little spin. Sweeping in my sweeper. Sweeping in my sweeper. <laughs> sweeper back in the yard. Loving the paint job, loving the artwork. We're gonna do a few bits now. I'm waiting for the number plate to arrive so I can put my new number plate on. Also, we're gonna put some mirror covers on. Now, the mirror covers that I ordered, they were, in fact, for the Volvo pump lorry, and I never used them because Volvo put the stainless steel mirror guards on themselves. So we're gonna to try to fit these on here, which should work. Something I did realize when taking a look, jumped in, took it for a drive. I realized that this rubber <laughs> was inside the uh, passenger side. Had a look around. If you remember here, you saw us up here sticking this rubber seal on at the top here. Well, it's been taken off. I guess they had to take it off to spray underneath there properly. So now we'll have to go and put this back on. My lovely mirror covers are on. My new number plate is on as well, front and back. Shout out to Action Signs who did all my artwork. Done a really good job. They've done all the lorries that are at Asheville. Every single one of them. Known those guys for years. They never let me down. So thank you so much. I think now, it's time to take it for a spin and put it to work. We're using the water tower to fill up the water in the sweeper. So as soon as we fill this up, we'll get out on the road and we'll test her. That's our gauge on the side telling us how much water we've got in. We're now full. Let's get out on the road and get her working. So we're gonna go for our maiden voyage. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna turn on here are these buttons and all these buttons work in two stages. So the first one we have here is our channel brush. So we flick the switch once to get it on, Next one is our hoover. Flick down once to get it on. And the last one is our belly brush. Again, we flick down once. At the front here, we have our high pressure washer. And now we've turned that on. So I've got all my gear down, taking my time. I'm doing seven miles an hour. It feels like I'm going too fast, but 
I'm looking in my mirrors, I can see everything. Everything's looking good. Every time I drive over it, the road is that bit cleaner. Loving it. Now that I can clean the road like this, the lorries won't track anything onto the road. drivers are generally very calm they don't even look in the uh, mirrors but I actually want to see how well it works so yeah. I'm flat out trying to see what's going on So that's it for my new sweeper. She's been serviced, looked after, she's had repair work, she's got a new lick of paint, she's got fantastic signs, and she is working well. This is gonna be absolutely massive for us. It's one more piece in the puzzle. We have a wheel wash, we have a weigh bridge, now we have a sweeper. It just goes to show that with the right TLC maintenance and know-how, the old lorries can do the same work as new lorries. Let's take a look at what she looked like before and what she looks like now. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. This has been the restoration and maintenance of my new sweeper lorry. When she came, she was one color, she's left another. When she came, she didn't work properly, now she works perfectly. This is massive for Asheville and I'm so happy it's one more piece in the jigsaw to becoming the company that we need to become. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a tour of the Asheville fleet and click here to see a day of my life. What does this take us, like five or six weeks in total? It's not bad. I think I'll take her back out on the road, try and get the road spotless. <laughs>